I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. So I think that I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Because what I'm not going to do, Ayanla, is be without. Baby, it's not happening. Be without So that would be without, be without protection. Be without protection. And be without the necessities of life. Uh you know, I'm literally on some fertility drugs. I am preparing for my embryo transfer in the next few weeks. Now, I am 40 years old, just turned 40 a couple of weeks ago. Y'all know I've been very transparent about my motherhood journey. I'm doing mm-hmm. it solo by choice. Y'all know I froze eggs at 34 years old. I'm mm-hmm. doing this. I'm excited to be a mom. Uh, I'm scared as hell. I know it's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And yet I cannot wait to enter this, this, this mother era mm-hmm. of my life. So it looks like congrats is in order for former Real Housewives of New York star and attorney Ebony K. Williams announces she is pregnant and expecting her daughter. A baby girl will be due in August. Okay. This article reports the happy news comes two years after Williams revealed she was using her frozen eggs to pursue motherhood via sperm donation and in vitro fertilization. She says anybody who's gone through IVF or attempted IVF will tell you so many things have to go right for the final results of this journey to be a baby. William says, that's why I've called this my remarkable miracle. Because it really does feel like I've been the recipient recipient of some very enormous favor from God above. I think this is great news. Ebony looks amazing for her age. She's stunning. She's 40. She's paid. She's a, an attorney. She's a journalist over there at the grill, which she owns. And she's also showing older women that if it didn't work out the way that you thought it would and you didn't land this marriage or you don't have the guy, but you really wanted motherhood, that is still possible for you later in life to pursue that and be a mother. So congratulations are in order for Ebony. She can't provide a proper upbringing. Baby, she's in TV shows and has books. You have 469 followers on TikTok and are a gym rat. What you got to show for your life? Because it certainly isn't this. (laughs) I know it's not these two books, though, because I'm kind of concerned you can't read. I I know you definitely can't write like this. What is a loser compared to a queen? Men are so miserable that women are proving that they can do it without you, that you'll reach for the stars and still miss. Imagine saying this on a post of someone who can very clearly provide. Single parents can sometimes be the better upbringing because guess what? No one wants to be around two parents who are constantly fighting. That doesn't show kids love in nurturing or healthy relationships. It shows them how to be in dysfunctional relationships. Y'all know what's crazy about this whole Ebony K. Williams situation? As a 40-year-old myself, I have watched men abandon their live children from pretty much all walks of life, all races. It just doesn't matter. A lot of men abandon their children. And now that women are choosing to take matters into their own hands, patriarchy is mad now. Ain't that crazy? Well, I guess it's a new day, the tables are turning, and y'all better get used to that shit. That the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes, they're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. If he owns the bus, if he owns it, if he owns the bus, that's no, that's a problem. That's a problem because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. (laughs) I'm not talking about that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who Mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. This entire interaction or Ayanla's response is predicated on the idea that women do not date below their earning potential or that their standards are too high in order to actually have successful relationships. The problem with that is that it just isn't true. 
Millennial women are two times more likely to earn more than their partners than boomers. And that's important because the worldview is often perpetuated by boomers that women today, modern women, have standards that are so high because of their own earning potential that they do not date down. And it actually is just a myth. Women that earn more money than their partners have the highest divorce rates, typically because the lower earning male partner cheats on the woman and then still receives alimony because she is the primary earner. Within structures of patriarchy, male identity is defined by career prospects and earning potential. The effect of patriarchy on male self-esteem is that their self-esteem and self-worth is reduced when a partner, a female partner, earns more than they do. Now, often this lack of self-esteem in male partners is blamed on the masculinity or the dominance of the woman in the relationship. However, statistics also show that high-earning women are more likely to do more housework and more child-rearing than their male counterparts, even when they are the primary earner. So what is the underlying determining factor of whether or not a relationship is considered happy and lasting? Self-esteem, a sense of self-worth, not feeling as though the patriarchy is in control of whether or not you are a person of value or if your relationship is valuable to the outer world because of who earns what. I am having a hard time with the idea that this conversation and the backlash is primarily about people's disdain for classism because I don't even think people really have an issue with classism. That's the thing. I don't think people generally have a problem with elitism as long as they're not on the outside. You have a problem with a woman you think is too old, not pretty enough, too aggressive saying, this is my boundary, this is my line. That's it. It is not about protecting working class black men. It is about punishing quote unquote uppity black women. And that's why I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Y'all. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Today is a good day and such a happy, happy day. <sighs> Y'all. So Ebony K has decided to um go through um the inv in vitro IV, I think it's IVF, right? Um, route to get pregnant and she is pregnant, y'all. Ah, I'm so excited, y'all. The patriarchy is pissed. They are pissed, but they're gonna have to get used to the new reality. We kept telling them, we kept trying to prepare them and tell them like, hey, you know, we don't need males at all. Males have served any and every purpose that they could have possibly served, which really is none. <laughs> the problem is they just kept lying to us and women kept trying different things that the patriarchy told them that they had to try. And now we've come to a new age where it's like, no, none of that stuff works. You're just a liar. So, you know, the jig is up. <laughs> the jig is up. The only thing scary about IVF, y'all, is like, First of all, I've heard that there, the, the patriarchy and the government is freaking out about the low birth rates that they could potentially try to use your egg, you know, several years down the line without your consent, you know, because of their ever devolving and ever dropping birth rates so that's one of my worries with that and oh there's also the fact that you know is it who was it was it sierra sierra got pregnant during i think her 30s later 30s um who's the one with nelly ashanti so the patriarchy is freaking out because now they realize, okay, well, women don't need males in order to get pregnant anymore. Women don't need males in order to take care of children. Women are waking up, waking up in droves and realizing like, hey, by the way, if you use your um, years to take care of yourself, to accumulate wealth, to be happy, have all your experiences, then you can 
pretty easily later on um, in, in your life, decide, okay, I want a kiddo and do it. You don't need a male present for any parts of your, of your life or your existence. So males are, I mean, the whole patriarchy is crumbling. I mean, they're freaking out, y'all. I mean, you can see the freak out just by the laws in, in certain states in the United States trying to prevent women from um, having control over their own body and their ability to give birth and not give birth. Well, it's not going to help them because more and more women are just not wanting to deal with males, period. They're just not. They're not. And the um, upper class... The upper class is also bent out of shape because they feel like they the quality of children that are being birthed are not the quality that they want. And I'm like, well, beggars can't be choosers, y'all. So they want better quality of children being birthed in the sense of, you know, the parental quality. But they don't have any quality males. So, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. So y'all, the whole thing is crumbling right in front of their eyes. I'm so excited about this news, but y'all, they are pissed. Okay. <laughs> I hate to, and I'm, I hate to sound happy about that, but it's just like funny to me. It's funny because they keep trying to say, oh, you're too old for this. You're too old for that. And so many women like are like doing it right here, right now. <laughs> and even if you don't want to do it, you can definitely get a surrogate and go the surrogate route. So honestly, what are males good for? What are they good for? Leave it in the comments below if you know what they're good for at this point. They're not good for anything. <laughs> Sucks for them. You know, I guess they're just going to have to rely on these uh, wars that they keep starting and then complaining about having to fight. Wild. Girl, there are straight men who do not like women. Let me explain. Let me cook. Just let me cook. I asked in the football locker room once. I said, hey, bros, like, what's something that y'all like about women that's not sexual or physical or any of that shit? Crickets. So then they tried to flip it. They tried to ask me the same question. I said, okay, you know, I feel like women are nurturers. I feel like you can let your guard down a lot around women. I feel like you can be a lot softer around women. You ain't got to be on no tough guy, macho man shit all day. Um, I feel like it's amazing hearing a female's perspective for once. You feel me? Like they, they sense of humor is a lot different. There's so many reasons that I can go on and on about why I like women, right? And like, uh, then on the internet, right, we see podcasts all the time, multiple podcasts, and the host, they whole topic of discussion is just degrading women and just saying how horrible females are and why men need to put their guard up and protect themselves. And I'm like, damn, bro, like, do y'all, like, and I don't know the name for it. I feel like we can all kind of connect and, you know, we can agree that there is a name for it. I'm not going to say it, but it's just very, very weird. We could just call it weird. So I'd be thrown off, like, when a motherfucker say, like, oh, Mason, you a lover boy, I'd be like, how are you not? Like, damn, like, you don't, you don't like your girl? Like, what the fuck? Like, how don't you like your girl? So I personally, I don't want to put a name to it, you feel me? I don't want to get canceled, but I just want to say, don't ignore the signs. Like, any guy that gets a thrill out of degrading women, any guy that runs under his boys the moment after he get done doing some sexual shit with a girl and he goes to them to get the satisfaction and the validation for whatever the shit he did, it's a name for that shit. And um, I'm going to just label it weird. Uh Agree. Most males do not like women. I notice a friend of mine has more respect for males than he does for women. So I told him that maybe his soulmate is a male. Bingo. <laughs> exactly. I keep trying to tell y'all leave these males alone. <laughs> They're gay. Okay. They don't like women. Leave them alone. We don't, you don't need them for anything. Focus on you. Focus on building you, doing what you want to do, experiencing life in the way that you want to experience it. If you feel like you might want to be a parent later down the road, um, then uh, freeze your eggs. There's like so many options now, y'all. And those options are only going to become more and more for women. Because again, their birth rates are plummeting and they're going to be left with no choice but to open even more doors up for women where they can do it without the, the, the presence of a male around. You know what I mean? This is so true. My ex hates women, but I feel like he was bi. Oh, 
<laughs> yep. They're, I, I'm telling you, they don't like women because they're gay. The accuracy, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Facts, it called, it called sometimes, it's called sometimes mother wound as well. They have a grudge or hate their mother, which is wild. I question that because how is the father never in the picture? How is the father never a topic of discussion? And it's always a mother wound. Hmm. I don't know. Sounds like a patriarchal concept to me. Lutz are still in the closet. Yeah. I think this is the real reason why. I think that in a 90th percentile of all males are gay. I think this is the real reason why they're just in the closet. They're gay. They like other males. And um, even back during the Spartan times, all the males in the Spartan were, they were gay y'all, but the, at least they had more, um, th they had more going for them ethically and morally because they were openly gay. So you can walk around fooling women. You can walk around trying to use women as beards, like for what? And women controlled the society and all the wealth. But the males were openly gay, at least. So at least women knew. We know what's going on. You know, and that's the most important thing. The ones that piss me off are the ones on the DL. I get so annoyed by that. It's like, if you're going to be on the DL, then stay to yourself. Don't go around trying to date women unsuspecting innocent people that you're putting at risk and you're lying to because you're selfish and you and and you're on the d on the dl if you're going to be on the dl then fight those demons by yourself okay and then when you're ready to come out go date what you like which is males <laughs> i mean it's just logic y'all Thank you. I literally don't date anymore because I don't believe I'm actually liked for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a thing. My husband doesn't like me. He play he he pays all the bills though, but he doesn't like me. <laughs> Girl. I mean, at least he if he pays all the bills. All I can say with that is make sure he's paying you too and you're building your wealth. So when it's time to vamoose, you're good and you're set. Right. Y'all not understanding what he means. He's mentioning between the lines. We are. We just said it. Yeah, we know they're gay. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Um, you are not lying, though. My ex hated me because I was going to school, buying my home. I swear something about him made me feel he wasn't happy for me. It's because he wasn't, girl. What? So many males hate on women for wanting to succeed in life. They want us to lay low and make less than them and lack intelligence. It's weird. So weird. I totally agree. Yeah. I figured this out in dating males that have a hard time being straight up and consistent during the, uh, during the dating era when it's no obligations on the table. Yeah. Reason I'm single. Yes, girl. You're awesome. These males need need good males like you to lead them. I don't I th I don't think this the content creator is a male. I think the content creator is a woman and she was just reposting this guy's content. I I think, I'm not sure. But maybe. Um Perhaps there are historical reasons as to why some males don't like women. Think about it. Why would males birthed by women grow up to hate males? Because they're gay. It's not a historical reason, sir. Goodbye. Thank you for speaking up about this. Yeah, okay. All facts, for real. It's really sad. Um, our, mo our moms are women, so I don't get a lot of the things being said, like, I love my mama. <laughs> right. It's so wild, y'all. I ain't letting no old <laughs> take the life out of me. No, I'm not doing it. Wow. You went to hoe around in your 20s and your 30s. Now you're 50 and you're single because you was hoeing around all around town. Community did. I'm going to get somebody that's younger because they less used. You're used. So you're used up and you want somebody less used up. No, go ahead and get your match. <laughs> y'all, <Yeah>, his face. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all see his face? Oh, my gosh. Let's see that again. No old <laughs> the life out of me no i'm not doing it wow. you want to hoe around in your 20s and your 30s now you're 50 and you're single because you was hoeing around all around town community did want to get somebody that's younger because they less used you're used 
So you're using <laughs> oh, his face. You want somebody less used up? No, go ahead and get your match. And she made just the point that she needed to make because it's so crazy how y'all become grandfathers and uncles and decide, oh, I want to give it a younger girl. She don't got no kids. I ain't got to worry about nothing. What? How does she benefit from being with you? You need daycare? Like, she don't want to sit around and babysit your grandkids. Why do you, with your three baby mothers, deserve the young lady that doesn't have no kids? The math is just not mathing. Why does she have to waste her good years on an old man? It don't be adding up. And use is use. That's the truth. You got all these baby mothers and all these grandkids, child. Don't nobody feel like being bothered with that. I don't even feel like being bothered with that. And I got kids. So imagine a single woman that has no kids. What is, how does she benefit from that situation? Think about it. You can't get anybody. You mean to tell me that a healthy, happy woman will willingly choose to spend the rest of her life by herself? Like, you know, it's always interesting when someone asks a question and the answer to their question was in their question. You said a healthy, happy woman. A healthy, happy woman is living her life on her own terms and knows what she wants. So if that's the life that she's choosing, it's because that's what she wants. And I always find it crazy to hear women describe other women who are not in a relationship and or don't have children as lonely. I think it says more about the person than the person they're talking about. Because if the only way that you can feel not lonely is in a romantic relationship or being a mother, that means that you didn't foster any relationships outside of the dynamic of a romantic partnership. Every single woman or woman without children is not lonely. In fact, I think that to be a successful wife or mother, you should actually water the relationships you have before you go into those roles. Because navigating your friendships, your relationship with your family and other people that you interact with on a daily basis is grounds for how you're going to navigate your relationship with your children and your husband. Being able to water those relationships and build healthy foundations will lead to a better chance of you having a healthier relationship with your partner or your children. Exploring yourself, learning your boundaries, learning how to communicate, learning how to deal with confrontation are all things that you should probably work on before you get into romantic relationships or have children. Not to mention, a lot of women are choosing to be single because they've already been in a relationship and realize that maybe that's not the lifestyle that they want for them. Or some may want a romantic relationship and just deciding that it's better to be single until they find exactly what they're looking for. And some people are just content being by themselves as far as living. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you ask a lot of mothers if they could live by themselves, a lot of them would tell you yes. If you ask a lot of wives if there was an option for them to live by themselves, a lot of them would tell you yes. Just say that you don't find peace in being by yourself and don't put it on other people. And when it comes to children, the notion that every woman needs to be a mother is asinine. There are plenty of people who want to have children or are going to have children. You don't have to speak to the women who are content not being mothers. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to be a mother or wanting to find a husband. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting a husband, wanting children, wanting to be a mother. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you start questioning why somebody else doesn't want that, you have to look deep inside yourself and ask you why you feel lonely without those things. Bars. Wow. <laughs> Bars. Mm -mm -mm. I think folks make content like that to get engagement because a person wanting to stay single is not even her business. So why else is she upset about it? It's so wild to me. I have no clue. It's so crazy. Oh my God, dust. Dust spotted. <laughs> People who can not bask in their own company for long periods of time scare me. They are so scary. They are so scary. Like, y'all, mm -mm, mm -mm. why am I obligated to get married? Can people not just exist by themselves? Like, what is the problem here? <laughs> well, the same man that said this. But if you have made it to 35 years old and you're unmarried, you are a leftover woman. Also said this. 40-year-old women, you don't need to be trying to compete with 27. First off, you can't. And the, and the best thing, you don't have to. A fine, a feminine 40-year-old woman, I would take her over a, a, a smoking 25-year-old any day. You give me a 40-year-old woman 
that that's in the gym and shape feminine. All right, so first of all, not too much on Kevin because number one, he's not here to defend himself. And number two, he was just the voice for men who thought like him and still do. Like the thing about it is some men have a vested interest in a woman not knowing her worth. They don't want you to realize that you're still a baddie at 40, even though you were also a baddie at 25. Just like he said, and on one breath, he says a woman over 35 is a leftover woman. But on the next breath, he said, give me a 40 year old woman. They know that you're a baddie. They try to make you feel like you're going to die alone, but you're all at once a baddie, always a baddie if she keeps herself up. OK, so and they know that. They're, they want you to not know that you're amazing even as you get older because they want to make you feel like you're lucky to have them at 40. They want you to feel like you have to settle at 40. At 40, you are a seasoned woman. Over, over 35, a seasoned woman. You're probably knee deep in your career. You got your own place, your, your own car. You got your 401k. You got all these things going for yourself. Like at that point, a lot of times you have more going for yourself than the men do. They know that, but they want to make you feel like, huh, because even with all that going for you, you can't compete with a 25 year old. They'll say all of that, but then they'll confess that a woman over 40 who still keeps herself up can give a woman in her 20s a run for their money. Don't let men use your age against you as a scare tactic. That's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to feel like you're running out of time. The window is closing. You got to pick somebody and pick somebody quick. Settling is how a lot of them get picked. And they want you desperate. There is nothing a raggedy man loves better than a desperate woman who is a catch. A desperate woman who has her life together, who wants to be married or wants to have kids so bad that she'll even give him a chance. No, what you really have is plenty of time. You have plenty of time. You have time to vet somebody properly and to get exactly what you want without settling. They don't want to tell you that because they are the men they want you to settle for. I'm not going to compete with 25 year olds. They can have these males <laughs> like literally exactly, exactly like they it's a it's a divisive method. It's a they want to isolate younger women so that they can prey on them. So they want to isolate younger women from women that are more experienced from older women so that the younger women can be preyed on. So it's a method that they use in order to divide, right? Divide and conquer. That's that's their strategy. I'm more of a baddie at 39 than I was at 25. Yep. The older I get, the better physical, financially, and spiritually. Exactly. Didn't he die? <laughs> Didn't he die alone? Yo, that is so true. Tell me why I never thought about it like that. He literally died alone. Well, that's what he gets for being a crappy person. <laughs> died alone, died younger than most, and he was divorced twice. What? Mm, Y'all. Y'all. Wow. Wow. Don't forget late on child support. <gasps> no, he was? Y'all. <laughs> wah, wah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly sounds like a real catch oh yeah for sure. <laughs> um ofc death not funny but talking ish and karma is lol exactly it's just like the irony Ugh, wow that's crazy so he died alone oh my gosh this is what every male that argues with me i'm this is what i'm gonna this 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 is what I'm using from here, from here forward. So, you know, your leader, Kevin Samuels, you know, he died alone, right? Two pregnancies and he was late on child support, right? <laughs> that's, I, that's exactly what I'm using from here forward. Life starts at 40. Goodbye, Kevin. Oh, gosh. Ladies are brutal. Literally, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a baddie at 48 than I was at 28. Yeah. These males are so useless. Like, what? And that's why it irritates me when the fact that they've weaponized the word old so much so that people get triggered by you saying old. It's like, do you not want to get old? Like you don't want to make it? Kevin Samuels didn't make it. He did not make it. Now did he? <laughs> Y'all like be so for real. Like this patriarchy is wild. They always attack older leftover quote unquote women instead of just focusing on younger women that they allegedly want. Yeah, literally. 
I'm 40, happily divorced, single with grown kids and unbothered. Yes, girl. I turned 40 in two weeks and feel like my window is just now opening. Yeah. Wild. 